Hi guys and welcome back to another fly fishing video So if you watched um, the channel last week You'll have seen me and Jock at the Lake of Menteith And we had an absolute ball It couldn't have fished any better really, could it? Oh, the Lake of Menteith last week was on fire Absolutely buzzing It was a great day, red letter day uh, Yeah, yeah red letter day And uh, we, we really had a brilliant time And so, this week we've come to Hairlaw Fishery and uh, it's one of the most upcoming fisheries in Scotland, the boy Ross that's got it. He's done a lot of work and uh, we've just had breakfast in the lodge, it was outstanding Jock eh? Oh, what a welcome from Ross this morning, he uh, squared away a breakfast for us, he organised our boat for us Aye. and uh, made us feel really really welcome so great start so far. Aye, so, uh, and you can tell how successful it is because you can't get a boat today, can you? They're can't all get booked a boat. out. The car parks are chocker. And the, the, up, at the, up at the hut there, it's the front of the lodge, it's absolutely buzzing. All the anglers blethering and chatting away, catching up with old friends. Looks great, sounds great. Aye, aye, I've had a bit of a crack on with boys, even I know, um, for, for up the road, but it's been good. So let's talk about the tactics we're going to employ today. I think um, it's not a particularly deep fishery. I think it ranges between sort of 8 and 12 feet as deep points. And I think it's actually shallower. In, in, in a lot of places, places. Aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's, it's, it's a lake that's full of character There's lots of little islands dotted round And I'm really looking forward to getting a float and giving it a yeah. go And I've been advised that in the morning Maybe a washing line sort of set up would do yeah. us well But we've been told that come the afternoon We're both going to be on the dry flies Well it is, it is quite a prolific dry fly water and we, we do know that from uh, previous visits that I've done I've done two uh, and I know a lot of people that fish here regular so Aye, and, and I'm really looking forward to that because I know that Jock's not got any dry flies <laughs> <laughs> I just don't show Lindsay them Aye, aye, I'm sure, I'm sure But, you know, uh, we're really excited about getting on the water So let's get to the boats and get sorted out So, without further ado Wait a minute, hey, huh? hey, hey Come That's on. my catchphrase On you go So, without further ado Let's get into it. So we're out on the water and uh, Jock and I both started uh, the same way we finished last week at Menteith. It was so effective. We've had our first drift, we've seen a couple of fish topping, but they don't seem to be committing to any of the food stuff that's on the surface. So we've been tweaking our setup. Uh, I've taken off the buoyant fly that I had on the point and I've put a cormorant on. I've got a couple of midges up for that and then I've put a big eyed booby on the top dropper. And the idea was that I was going to create a wake with a booby with my top dropper and then bring fish into the rest of my flies on the cast. That didn't work out for me. Now Jock, he's had a couple of changes and he's going to talk you through that now. I took all the boobies off and put uh, small naturals on. They're like a small buzzer with a wing. I suppose you would call it like a, a small common, very sparsely dressed. Still kept the midge tip on, but I didn't feel like it was the, the, right, the right method. So what I've done now is I've went to a fast glass, just to go down a bit. Um, I've put two comments in the middle and I've got the two uh, boobies on just to see if they've went down a bit and if they'll take boobies or comments down a little bit deeper. So I'll take us right up into the bay. Uh, we've just seen a boat taking one on the way up. So let's uh, hopefully we'll connect with a fish on this drift. So the, the moral of the story folks is if you're, if you're drifting and you're not catching fish you've got a couple of choices, you can either change your location uh, or you can change your setup. Now me and Jock know that this lake is absolutely filled with fish so we reckon it's a problem with our setup rather than a problem with the location. So we've both been chopping and changing and we're both doing different things so that when one of us eventually does lock onto the method the other can quickly change and hopefully we'll both be in 
to fish soon. Well, the, the rain's just about to come on, but we wanted just to give you a little update on what's happening. Jock and I have, um, we've chopped and changed methods. I've been on dries for the last hour, and all I've managed is one trout up to worry my fly. Um, no fish in the boat for me. Jock's managed to catch a cracking blue trout. It was a stunning colour. We've tr we're starting to chop and change to try and find a method that'll work for us, and uh, I went down to five pound tippet, single fly on a very long leader, 20 feet, and immediately I got a fish, but uh, because I'd gone to five pound, it, it soon um, bust me up and took the hook with it. So, Jock, what do you think? We're, uh, we're toiling a bit, Pally. Eh? Well, we're definitely toiling. Um, we've not seen many boats catching fish, to be perfectly honest. But uh, Jim Crawford, I think he had four. He's been getting them on the dries. But I think it made a difference here, Lindsay, when we were fishing into the bank. Yeah, closer and, in. Yeah. Uh, I got a knock down there, but obviously didn't convert it. And um, you got broken there. So yeah. maybe it's worth concentrating drifting yeah. onto that far bank. Absolutely, mate. Right. No lunch for us until I've got some fish in this boat. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, we're back in the dock. We've just had our lunch and delicious it was too. So I managed to keep Jock away for the carrot cake. We're back in the boat and we're now tackling up for the afternoon. While we were out there, one of Jock's teammates, Jim Crawford, he was doing rather well on uh, some cold canards uh, at size 14. He was kind enough to give us some, even though I've got virtually exactly the same in my own box. It's still nice to get that wee bit of confidence when the boy that's catching the fish has given you the flies. So this afternoon, I'm currently 2-0 down. I need to pick up my game and try and get a few fish. for about an hour and um, we're having such a good time we uh, my fortunes transformed jock bought me lunch i think that's what's done it actually because i came straight out and smashed out two fish and then shortly after got a third one to just edge me in the lead but jock's missed i don't know how many fish now in it and i'm not far behind him i've got to be honest but what we think and we've been chatting about it is normally fish will be feeding up the wind and, and they're not doing that. So you can see a fish rise and if you try and track it and put your flies in front of it, it will go a different direction. It's what we call smutting. Definitely smutting. They're definitely smutting. Try to track them up the wind, following them up, following them up, putting it in front of them. And then next thing you see, they've turned and went the other way. It's, uh, it's quite unusual for them to keep turning rather than keep going up the wind and um, it's making it a bit difficult for me to get my flies in the right place <laughs> but Lindsay's doing well he's managed to pick up a couple so that's good 
well, it's not so good, but... <laughs> very lucky, uh, I would say very lucky for me. Just came out. Jock, Jock brought us really close into the bank. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in a second. But we're ve I mean, I'm not three rod lengths off the bank. And the fish that I caught quickly, I took really close in. And uh, I'm not quite sure what they're feeding on. I think it's very small. But we're having great fun. You know, it, even if you don't get them, it's always fantastic to target rising fish. And I think Jock would agree. Look, uh, the amount of fish has come up and went round my flies and they're 14s, they're, they're, they're quite small they're coming round and they're swirling underneath it and yeah, and I've, I've had some of that as well so when they come and swirl underneath we call that a refusal they've come up to investigate and they've thought no I don't like the look of that but nonetheless I still owe Jim Crawford a pint you know we're here fishing the Kit Kat Cup I just bumped into one of my teammates one of the change guys Jim Crawford he called us over, asked us how we were doing. He gave Lindsay some flies. We've come out in for lunch, we've come out. I had a nice comfortable lead. He's gave Lindsay the flies and Lindsay just smashed two there. Jim, <laughs> need to speak to the boys about this. Jim, you can join the soldier palmers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, our day here, law over, and what a day it's been. Uh, what do you think, Jock? Let's hear your appraisal of the day. Well, it's been a day of two halves, Lindsay. Certainly has that. This morning, I had a, a nice wee lead, two fish, Aye. and I was quite cock a hoop with myself. And rightly so. I, I was. I really struggled in the morning. I just couldn't put anything together. I went on the dries for a while. I, then it went flat cam, and I just couldn't get them to work. And uh, we, we, Jock decided, and I'm so pleased he did. He said, "Let's go in. We'll enjoy one of the fantastic lunches that Hairlaw offers here in their little uh, cafe." And uh, just before we went, for one of Jock's teammates, Jim Crawford, shouted thank you, us over. Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Jim shouted us over. He said, "Look, have." have a few of these flies and try them in the afternoon and basically they were very small culls I think size 14s were 14s, they? 14s, yeah size 14 cull de canards and I um, I decided to fish two sort of maybe 8 feet apart and I rigged it all up we went in, we had something to eat and Jock took us back out well when we went back out we decided that we were going to try and stay in some ripple yes, yeah and we moved up round uh, to the left of the main basin and earlier in the day, we had been told the fish were close to the bank. Yeah, yeah. So I put Lindsay on the bank, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I, it was quite literally on the bank. And I think my very first cast of the afternoon, I immediately hooked into a fish and I got that one. And then a couple of casts later, I'd just recovered my fly and I'd got another one. So I was over the moon. It was 2-2. But then after that, Jock was, he, he's a professional. You know, he very quickly switched to the dries and it was tit for tat after that. I was tit for tat all afternoon and, and the amount of fish we were missing. Yeah, yeah. And like Lindsay says, there was a few choice words that we won't be putting on the video. Well, well, you know, I've got a lot of footage for this afternoon and none of it's usable because there'd be a blue background. So uh, <laughs> you might not see very much of that. But the fishing was great and... The afternoon just flew in. It did. and the fact, um, we were the last boat back. <laughs> and, and it was funny, actually, because I was saying to Jock, I said, Jock, all the boats are heading in. Do you think we're supposed to be back at the jetty by five o'clock? And we were a wee bit late. And the, the final score, you might be interested to hear, was 6-5 to moi. Congratulations, so, my friend. Thanks well done, very Lindsay. much. But you know what he did? He went straight up to Ross and said, we're late back. I think we should be disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> so... Next week at Loch Leven's going to decide the home of the Kit Kat Cup for this year. And what a better place. What, what better place could you get? Loch Leven. The home of fly fishing. Exactly. And being a couple of Dunfermline boys, it's our well, local, local water. Well, eh? it's When's when the last time you fished it? We won't answer that question. I think I was 1991. It's the best kept <laughs> secret in Scotland, Loch Leven, at the minute. I've heard it's very good. It's, and uh, uh, There is a very good chance, folks, that we're going to see some very big brown trout so we can we can but hope but until next time thanks for watching